Can we capture this underwater look in a resin petri? Let's try. <music> Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Some Petries end up reminding me a little of underwater worlds. I've gotten to know what certain alcohol inks will do in resin and what different resins can do at varying thicknesses. So I'd like to purposely aim for an underwater world this time. I'd like some 3D coral, or jellyfish-like shapes that bump out in the Petri like I got in this one. And I'd also like some anemone-like flowing tendrils. Oh, and I'd like a lot of color. <laughs> so, can we do it? Dream big, I say. <laughs> Let's give it a try. To get the soft tendril effect, I'm going to use Kielty ink in Clearcast 7050 that I've made more runny or less thick by warming in advance. By the way, there's a 20% off coupon code and link for the resin in the description box, and it's good for anything at the Epoxy Resin Store. Now, about warming the resin. Personally, I just warm part A because part B is usually thin enough. Once it's mixed and poured, I let the resin sit for a couple of minutes to allow any bubbles to gather in the middle of the mold, and then I can run my torch very quickly to pop them. And I also make sure not to let the torch heat the resin along the edge of the mold so it doesn't have a chance to bond to the mold. And now I'm ready for my inks. I'm starting out with some blue, followed by yellow, forest green, more blue, <laughs> violet, a tad more green. And now I'm covering the surface with the pinata white or Blanco Blanco. And then I let the white do its thing. Now let's add more color. Yellow, blue, more of this gorgeous violet. And now let's throw some red orange into the mix. Now I have no plan as to where the individual colors are going. I just try to be mindful of which colors overlap. I'm trying to avoid creating a muddy color. The orange over the green is a calculated risk since they're both on the warm yellowish end of the spectrum. So I'm hoping that they can be okay together. After this round of color, I add some more white, but a lot less than before. I don't want too much pastel on the other side, really. I want brighter colors when I flip this over. And because my resin is thinner this time around, the white sinks faster, so I've gotta be good about how much I add. I'm adding additional color along the edge because it tends to be pretty easy to get tendrils along the edge. For some reason, I really don't know why, but whenever I drop inks along here, I get really pretty tendrils, so I want those for my little anemones. And then I follow that with some white. Now I get asked often why we need the white. Alcohol ink is dye-based and light in weight. So when you drop it in resin, it will sink a little, but not a lot, a lot. Also, the inks are transparent or translucent at best. So overlapping lots of colors would make them kind of indistinguishable from each other after a couple of layers. So the white on the other hand, is pigment-based, and as a result, it's heavier 
and it's opaque. It literally sinks through the resin and it takes the colors down with it. And if your resin is thinner, you also run the risk of the white pushing all the way through to the bottom and possibly in ways you don't want, <laughs> which I'm thinking I may have done a little here, crossing my fingers. But yeah, the function of the white is to give you depth of color, visibility of your colors really, and also to take them down through the resin. Okay, with all my color and white down, I start adding dimension to this piece by pouring in that extra resin that I'd reserved for this step. I'm dropping it in from about eight inches above right now. And I'm aiming to make clear puddles that will hopefully force their way down just enough to make like 3D blobs on the other side. Since the goal is something that looks organic, I'm not being really symmetrical about where I place these blobs, the size, or their shape for that matter. As the resin gets thicker, I have to spiral in the resin more to see what that gives us, like what these little spirals will end up looking like. I finish off the rest of the resin by making very thin worm-like lines all over the surface because I think that'll add interest. And I spiral in a few more puddles. Pouring in resin sometimes creates bubbles. So you see me running the heat gun over the piece to pop any that I can see. And then this is what we have before I put this to bed for 24 hours. Alrighty, it's been a day and I have tested this. It seems pretty hard and I'm not feeling any gummy spots, but you know, I put gloves on just in case. <laughs> now the texture on the top is pretty wrinkly looking in the middle. I see that a lot in Petri's, not always, but often. So, if I plan to have this side show too, I can always just add a very thin top coat and you'll never know these wrinkles were there. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got. Did we get our undersea world? I want to make sure the mold did not stick to the piece. And so far, so good. And I'm seeing some sinking of the inks, so I'm encouraged. I went out of my way to get the sinking here, so I'm happy to see it. At least we've got anemone-like tendrils on the periphery of this, and they are colorful and cool. And now, here we go. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> I just love these things. I just, oh my gosh, look at this. I do see an underwater world with jellyfish and anemones and some greenery. Oh, and it's so colorful. The colors are vibrant and distinct, and the edge is just super interesting. I love that we can see into the world and even see the 3D jellies and coral. See there? How cool is that? Well, I think this is a big success. The little white spots where the white sank are even acceptable, but I'm toying with removing them. 
What would you do? Tell me in the comments. I'm thinking that since my goal was the raised dimensional areas, I think I'd like the eye to focus in on those without any distraction. So maybe I should remove the little dots. Hmm. I'm going to ponder. I decided to remove the light spots, and I'm using my Dremel to do it quickly. For a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this with or without a Dremel, see the video linked up at the top of the screen for you now, and also listed in the description box below. When doing this with a Dremel, please remember to protect your lungs and wear a dust mask. In the comments, tell me about your resin experiences, any repairs you've done, and definitely come and share your work in my Facebook group. You'll see the work of others, and you can get feedback, advice, and have fun. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you won't miss new videos when they come out. With all the spots removed, Let's make this beautiful and shiny again. I'm mixing up 15 milliliters of clear cast for my top coat. This time around, I'm keeping it at room temperature so that it's thicker and easier to manage with surface tension. It'll have more bubbles as a result of being thicker, but we'll fix those easily with a torch. I've propped up my Petri on my favorite little silicone cups and I spread the first bit of resin, making sure it gets into the little divots I made with the Dremel. I continue to add resin bit by bit, carefully spreading it out to the very edge and passing the torch periodically to pop any bubbles. And then once I'm confident all visible bubbles are popped and the resin is evenly to the edge, I put this beauty to sleep one more time. <laughs> and now let's see where we ended up after removing the spots and adding the top coat. I think we've got a pretty new rounded edge better visibility to our underwater world, and a wonderfully super shiny top. Do you agree? What are your thoughts? Tell me in the comments. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Huge thank yous to my amazing patrons for all that you do and for making this channel possible. And a really big thank you to Angela N. for this fun display turntable. I just love it. Remember, links for the more detailed videos that I mentioned earlier and all the products I used are in the description box, including the 20% off coupon code for your resin order. Let your creative natures shine this week. Please pray for those in Australia. See you soon. Bye now.